Okay, so I decided to, uh, it was time to make a video for how to use the scanner uh, with Hemi vehicles. Um, we'll make a, another video that is going to be similar with Chevy vehicles or GM vehicles. Uh, it's pretty much just going to be the same thing either way. Um, what we have here is a VCM scanner. The VCM scanner is pretty simple to use once you fully understand it. You have channels, your gauges, your graphs, and your charge. Now, the standard HP tuner setup should have information populated in all of those. Okay. One of the things is is this right here is the most important information we have is going to be populated in our graphs uh, because our graphs are basically set up our histograms to show error. They are to show error and when it's happening so it shows you when you can find out where it's rich where it's lean where it's knocking whatever all the way across uh, but all the information in here you're gonna wanna have the information here and you definitely need the information here otherwise you cannot populate you'll see we have spark now this this um, particular layout is uh, for uh, most Hemis. Um, you have your Spark, you have your Spark wide open throttle, which is com a completely different setup. You notice that the, the air charge is completely different. Um, though these, let's take a look here. Information is the same between the two, it's just the um, the units are different. I'm going to have to actually change this one to match uh, like this. Uh, but I guess don't pay attention to that right now. This is the correct layout right here. Um, we have Spark Retard. We have Retard Wide Open Throttle. Bank 1, Volumetric Efficiency. Bank 2, Volumetric Efficiency. Short Term Bank 1. Long Term Bank 1. Um, and you can, you can do bank two, short term and long term as well. Um, I just don't see an, in, uh, a point in the information unless you're going to average between the two of them before you use the data because your fuel injectors system is global so it doesn't matter uh, what you do to the fuel injector system. Uh, it is going to be a global change. So one of the first things that you need is to have your engine file open and you need to basically pull information out of here to put in your graph. So in this case, we will go to speed density, volumetric efficiency, bank one. And as you can tell, that's, that table is awful, and that is a factory table. Uh, more than likely, the car might run on that, but it's going to run awful on it. Okay, so the information we need is this right here, ratio RPM. You go back to your scanner. Now, for those of you who don't have anything, you are going to start brand new fresh. So, we'll add a table. Parameter, we are going to do, let's see. We will do it based on long-term fuel trims bank one. You can choose short-term fuel trims, or you can choose a combination of the two. So we'll do that. Yes, sounds good. Okay, we have parameters versus column versus rows. Columns are here, rows are here. So we will have RPM, and we will have ratio which is pressure ratio. From here, we will go column access, copy labels, go back, paste them in, go back here, pressure ratio, row access, copy labels, put it in here. Now, 
you can pick a name. Let's just we're just gonna write this as new, so I know to delete it when we get off of this. So we'll remove this. And now you can see that since I already had a long open, there is data populated in here uh, that'll show long-term fuel trims based on that area. What that allows us to do, which we have videos for, is in this situation, I can copy this. I can go back here. I can hit paste special, multiply by half, and make changes based on the area, the, the error ratio uh, in the file to get the file closer. But we have more in-depth videos on how to do that, so don't just go out and do that because you're, you're, you might get close, but you're not going to be able to get it tuned like that. So these are very easy to set up and like I said you need to have this information typically in other areas of this. So you can see I have fuel mass delivered cylinder one. That's going to be right here. We have knock. We have knock multipliers. I have everything related to knock in here. Um, we have manifold vacuum, manifold absolute pressure. We have pressure ratio which is right here. Uh, and all the information is here in the channels. You, if you do not have the channels, it will not record the information, which means you will not fill these up. So, when I don't really know, you need to go over what to do when you're logging because we have more specific videos based on what you're actually looking for. But this is basically a simple setup on how to set these things up. You can right click here chart layout uh, it's it's identical so let's just add a group let's add a series let's just type in ratio again and pressure ratio right here close that out now let's take a look here again So your pressure ratio, if we go back here and we'll look at the one that we did, your pressure ratio only goes up to one here. So your chart layout, you need to set a minimum and a maximum. So we can call this ratio and we can set our max at one, which is exactly what this is. Close it off and now you can see here that now it is reading the ratio right down here um, and it works very well this way um, and it's very simple to use and it's usually pretty forgiving so here we're gonna have to close the log to show you this so we're gonna close this log right click add channel we're gonna type in ratio again and you're not gonna be able to see it because we already have ratio in here so we'll try something new. So let's just go to engine, idle, idle desired RPM, idle airflow. You can go like this, edit it right here, do this, add that in there. Then when you start recording the vehicle, the tables that work with the vehicle will turn black and they will populate with data. If they will not work with the vehicle they will either stay gray like this or they will disappear completely uh, making it very easy for you because you can technically go in and add every single parameter you want and record it now keep in mind you don't want to double add specific parameters because you will cause issues so if you were to go to mass airflow sensor you do not need to have multiple mass airflow sensors on there you can have frequency and mass airflow but you don't want to have both of the flows because if it's populating data for two different ones sometimes this over here will actually put both of the data together or it'll read from the wrong sensor uh, if anybody has any questions you can feel free to message me and ask or ask me to make a video on something specific uh, but other than that the scanner is very very easy to use uh, and it, it helps very much on getting your cars dialed in properly